What is going on guys welcome back in today's video we're going to learn how to implement an encrypted file transfer using sockets in python so let us get right into it All right, so for this encrypted file transfer today, we're going to use symmetric encryption. This basically means we're going to use the same key for the encryption as for the decryption, which is different from something like RSA from asymmetric encryption, where we have public and private keys, the public key being used for the encryption, the private key being used for the decryption. This might make more sense if you want to exchange the key. So if you want to exchange, for example, the symmetric key, you might want to use something like RSA, but for the actual file transfer, we're going to use asymmetric approach. And before we get into the code, we need to install two Python libraries or two Python packages, we're going to start with pip install pycrypto. This is the most important package, this is going to do the actual encryption, the socket transfer will be done with uh, core Python. And in addition to that, once this is done, if it's done, I actually have it installed already, so it shouldn't take too long. Um, but what we're also going to install is we're going to install TQDM, which is essentially a library that I have used on this channel already. It's a library that displays professional progress bars. So I'm going to terminate this now because I already have PyCrypto installed. You just have to do pip install PyCrypto and then also pip install TQDM for the progress bars. Once you have these two libraries installed, we can start working on the first file, which is going to be a file for generating the keys. So generate underscore keys dot py. And here we're going to just generate a simple symmetric key. Actually, we should maybe just call this generate key because it's not going to be plural. Um, and here we're going to say now from crypto dot cipher, we want to import the advanced encryption standard. So AES, and we can manually define a key if we want to, we can also generate it randomly. Uh, the important thing is that the key has to have 16 bytes. So if you come up with your own key, it has to have 16 bytes, it cannot have 15 or 17 bytes, it has to have 16 bytes. One example would be for example, the neural nine key that has 12345678910111213141516 bytes as you can see the same thing can be done for the so called nonce um essentially you can think of this to be a little bit like a salt so just something that you add to the key we can call this for example the neural 9 ncn or actually nce maybe for nonce whatever you want to call it, or you can just generate this randomly, you need to have 16 bytes for the key and 16 bytes for the nuts. That's, that's the requirement here. And then we can just create a cipher by saying cipher equals AES dot new. And we can say that based on the key, we want to have a new cipher, the mode is going to be AES dot mode EAX. And we're going to also pass the nuns. And then we can generate a cipher text. So we can say something like cipher text. Um, dot uh, cipher text dot um, not dot sorry cipher text equals cipher dot encrypt and then we can pass bytes into the encrypt function here. And this will then give us the encrypted result. So I can say here something like hello world. And then I can print the cipher text and you're going to see that this is the result now. So this is not really readable to us. Uh, but we can go ahead now and use the same cipher to decrypt that. So we can get uh, actually go ahead and create a new cipher, saying cipher equals AES dot new, and we're going to use basically the same line. So I'm, I'm using this again, so that you see that this is the exact same thing. So we can either use the existing object already, or we can just create a new uh, AES instance using the same key and the same nonce, and this will be able to decrypt the cipher text. So we can say cipher dot decrypt and then cipher text cipher text there you go and when i print this you can see we have hello world now i actually thought about exporting this but it might actually make more sense to just do it in the receiving and in the sending script so we're actually going to just delete the script now and we're going to do the same thing in our receiver um and in our sender script and we're going to start here with the uh, sender. So we're going to say here sender.py. This is going to be the script that sends the encrypted file. Uh, here we're going to say import OS, which is a core Python module, import socket, which is also a core Python module, and then from crypto 
dot cipher we're once again going to import aes the advanced encryption standard we're going to define the key again the neural nine key the nonce is going to be the neural nine nce um, and we can say that the cipher is again aes dot new passing the key passing the respective mode and passing the nonce and then all we need to do now is we need to, um, oh, of course, this needs to be byte, so B in front of the string here. Um, all we need to do now is we need to transfer a file, and instead of just transferring the raw file, we're going to just encrypt everything we transferred. That's the basic idea. It's nothing too fancy. We're going to say now that the client is equal to socket, socket, socket dot stream, making it a TCP socket. But actually, first of all, we need to say it's an internet socket. So socket dot socket, uh, not socket socket, socket dot AF underscore INET. This basically now means that we have an internet socket using a connection oriented protocol in the context of the internet socket that is TCP. So we're going to use TCP because we don't want to lose any data. And this is the benefit of TCP. It's lower than UDP, but it doesn't lose any data. So we are creating a TCP client here. And we say client.connect. In this case, we're going to run everything over the local host. So we're going to just say localhost port four times nine. And the receiving script is going to be waiting on that host and receiving the data. Now, what we want to transfer first is the file size. Um, and for this, we're going to just say the file size is going to be equal to os.path.get size. So this module here, we use it to get the size of the file that we want to transfer. Now, for now, I'm just going to call this file, we're going to then trans, um, trans, uh, transfer a video, uh, briefly, but for now, I'm just going to call this file, and then we're going to play around with file later on. Um, and or actually, let me just create a simple text file here. Let's just call this file, actually. And let's just say something like Hello World, I am a file. Now, this is obviously quite simple. This is just a simple text file, but we're going to also be able to transmit video files, for example. So the file size is os.path.get size of the file. And next, we want to say with open, we want to open that respective file in reading bytes mode as a file stream f and we want to say that the data is f dot read and now we have the data in our script. And all we need to do is we need to encrypt that data, we need to say encrypted equals cipher dot encrypt the whole data. And all we need to do now is we need to say client dot send. And the idea here is we don't want to just send the data. First of all, we want to send some meta information about what we're going to actually be transmitting, so that the receiving end also knows, okay, what kind of file is this? How uh, big is uh, how big is the file, so that we can display a progress bar, for example. So first of all, we're going to transfer the file name, including the extension, then we're going to transfer uh, the file size so that we can display a progress bar on the receiving end, then we're going to send all the data, all the encrypted data, and then we're going to um, also send an end tag so that the receiving end knows that the file um, file stream is coming to an end. So we're going to start by in this case saying file.txt, let's just call it txt for the receiving end. Um, and we're going to encode this, of course, because we need to send bytes. Then we're going to say client dot sent, we're going to take the file size, and we're going to turn it into a string. So str of file size, this string is then going to be encoded. And then we're going to do client dot send all encrypted. So this is just going to send all of the encrypted data. Uh, we don't need to encode this because it's already byte data since we're reading the bytes. And finally, we're going to send an end tag, which is just going to be byte and then end in capital letters like this in angle brackets. And finally, last but not least, client.close. That's it for the sending script. So let's just quickly review the code once more. We're creating a key or we're defining the key and the nonce that we want to use. We create a cipher, we create a TCP socket for internet communication, we connect to localhost where our receiving uh, server is going to be hosted. We're calculating the file size of the file that we want to send. We're loading the data of the file in, for, in the form of bytes. 
we're encrypting this data, we're sending the name of the file that is going to be transmitted, we're sending the file size, we're sending the encrypted file, and we're sending an end tag so that the receiving end knows that now the file was received fully. So what we need then is of course the receiving script. So we're going to call this receiver.py. And here we're going to import also socket. We're going to this time also import tqdm for the progress bar and then from cipher, or actually from crypto.cipher, we're going to import AES, the advanced encryption standard. Um, the first three lines can actually be copied because we're going to again, define the key, the nonce and the cipher. It's going to be the same as I said, because it's symmetric encryption. Uh, and then we're going to just say server equals socket, 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 AFI net, socket, sock stream, making it again, a TCP socket, but this time we're not going to connect to an existing host, we're going to host um, a server ourselves. So we're going to say server dot bind, we're going to bind the server onto localhost port 9999. And we're going to listen for incoming connections. So server dot listen. Um, and once we accept a connection, we're not going to make this a multi threaded receiver. So it's just going to accept one connection, and then the script is over, we're not going to constantly accept. So we're not going to do something like while true accept connections, we're going to accept, uh, accept exactly one connection, and we're going to receive the file. So we're going to say client address is going to be equal to server dot accept. This returns a client instance itself, this is a socket, which we can use to communicate uh, with the client what's happening now. Okay, seems like it's buggy. Clients, there you go. Uh, and the address is just the IP address and the port uh, that the connection is coming from. So as we already know, we're first transmitting the name and the file size. So we can actually receive those things from the client and store them. So we can say the file name is equal to client dot receive, we're going to receive 1024 bytes, we're going to decode them into a string, we're going to do the same thing for the file size, we're going to receive 1024 bytes, we're going to decode them, and we can also print them. So we can say print file name, print file size. <coughs> And then we can say that the file um, itself will be opened um, in a writing byte mode. So we're going to open a file stream targeting this file name, which is also a reason why you might want if you're running this on localhost, you might want to choose a different name for the file. So if I'm loading file here, I'm writing file.txt, because otherwise, I'm just going to overwrite the existing file, and we're not going to see any effect. So we're going to open up a new file stream, targeting file name in writing bytes mode. This is going to be called file. <clears throat> and here we're going to say now done equals false. File bytes is going to be an empty byte stream. And the basic idea here is that we don't know um, how much data we have to get. So we can essentially just receive and receive and receive and append, because we don't have something like receive all we, we do have the function send all to just send all the bytes, but we cannot just say receive all we have to receive a specific number of bytes, which is why we're going to do this in a while loop. But before we get into the actual while loop, we're going to take care of the progress bar, we're going to say that the progress is equal to tqdm dot tqdm the unit is going to be B for bytes, the unit scale is going to be true so that we can actually see the scale of the units. So kilobytes and stuff like that, we're going to say unit divisor is going to be a 1000. And then the total is going to be int of file size. So this is our goal. This is the 100% and everything in between will be um, progress that is updated. So now we're going to say while not done, the data is going to be client receive, we're going to receive 1024 bytes. If the file bytes that we already have, so if this thing here ends with so in this case, we're going to do it with negative five colon to say if the last five characters of this byte stream are equal to end. If that's the case, we're going to set done to true. 
Otherwise, we're going to set file bytes. We're going to uh, add to the file bytes the data. And the basic idea, why are we checking for file bytes? Why are we not checking for data? Because the problem could be um, that this end tag is going to be cut off. So maybe I get some data and the last two symbols are angle bracket and E and then I get some additional data and I only get ND closing bracket. So I'm not going to get the full string. Whereas if I append always everything to the file bytes, this thing will be at the end once there is no more data. So we can check the file bytes instead of just the data that we're loading here in chunks. So by checking this, we know that the final result is um, actually in file bytes, and we can just cut off the last five uh, characters and we have essentially all we need. And of course, every time with each iteration, we want to say progress update, we want to update 1024 bytes. So this is going to get us closer to the 100% by 1024 bytes. And finally, we want to say file.write cipher.decrypt because remember everything we got um, is essentially uh, coming from, uh, is, is essentially encrypted already and we need to decrypt it first. So we're going to decrypt the file bytes. We're going to close the file. We're going to close the client and we're going to close the server. That should be it. So let's run this now. And let's run this now as well. This happened instantaneously. And if I open this up, you can see we have Hello World, I am a file. Now I think the problem here is that we're not removing the end tag. So we're decrypting something that is not encrypted. This can be solved quite easily by just saying everything up until negative five. I think that should be it. So let's run this again. And there you go. Hello world, I am a file. You can see it's the exact same file. It was transmitted um, over the sockets and the data. If you would use something like Wireshark to see what is being transmitted, you would not be able to see those files. You would only see, um, you, would, you would not be able to see any content. You would not be able to see any of the real bytes. You would only see encrypted stuff. So actually we can see what is being transmitted before it is decrypted by just saying print file bytes. And if I run this again, you will see that this is what we actually get here. So we get a bunch of bytes that we cannot really um, understand. And then we have this end tag. That's the basic idea. All right, so last but not least, let us transmit a file that is not just text. Here I have a video that I just recorded. It is the intro to this video. So we can actually open it up in the Explorer. I can then double click it and you will see. What is going on guys? Welcome back into this video. Going to that is essentially the intro to this exact video that I'm just recording right now. And we can take this now and we can transmit it. So we can go to the sender. We can say that this is the file that we want uh, to transmit. It is the encrypted file1.mkv. It's the encrypted file1.mkv. And we want to send this and store this as new video.mkv, for example. So I can just do it like that. I can run the receiver, I can run the sender. And you can see the progress bar is making progress down here. It's almost 100%. There you go, it finished. This is what we get here. Now, to be fair, we would probably also not be able to understand anything if it was not encrypted. Uh, but if I now open this in the Explorer. What is going on guys, welcome there back. You go. It's the same video, it was transmitted uh, in an encrypted way over sockets. And this would make sense of course, if someone would have an interest in that video before it's published. Understandably, you want to see it before everyone else. But um, with the encryption, you would not be able to see the content unless you have this key unless you can also decipher unless you can also decrypt the video. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.